Right, and as the month of May approaches, so does the start of pool season. Some kids have already taken advantage of the warm weather to enjoy their pool, but drowning is the leading cause of death in children one to four years old in the United States, and it is the second leading cause of death after motor vehicle crashes in kids between five and 14 years old. Here to talk more about it, Dr. David Purse, Chief Medical Officer with the City of Houston, talking about pool safety this morning, Dr. Purse, and what's your number one recommendation? Is it to enroll kids in swim lessons? Well, I've got two recommendations. One is to absolutely enroll your kids in uh, pool lessons, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But um, the other thing is to be supervision. We need to talk about that too. But yeah, get your kids, uh, you know, trained on how to be in a pool. So recently, the American Academy of Pediatrics uh, came out and said that kids age one and older can actually get swimming lessons. Now, to keep in mind, for the little ones, from between one and four, they're not really learning how to swim like swim strokes. They're learning how to be, you know, in the pool, how to get out of the pool if they need to, how to be comfortable in the mm -hmm. water. Now, that doesn't necessarily make them drown proof. So we're going to talk a little bit about what else you need to do. Uh, but I think that it's it, parents, you know, that, you know, beginning at about age one and older, you can go ahead and get your kids into uh, swimming lessons, but make sure they're qualified trainers, right? Not just the, the kid down to the teenager down the sweet street who's on the swim team. You want to go to a real bona fide uh, swimming instructor. And so what is the best advice that you can give to reduce the risk of drowning? Yeah, so here's the thing. The number one thing is a constant supervision, and I cannot stress this enough. Um, one thing that people don't recognize is that when somebody drowns, it's not like in the movies. You know, in the movies, when somebody drowns, there's lots of splashing and yelling and um, blah, 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 and, you know, and gurgling and, and all kinds of noise. In reality, when somebody drowns, it's basically silent. This past weekend, we actually had a near drowning event. It was a 14 year old. We think he probably had some sort of a medical uh, event occur. He was in a pool with a bunch of other kids. None of the kids in the pool recognized something was wrong until somebody else walking by the pool saw this child down at the bottom of the pool and they went in and got him out and they were fortunately they were able to resuscitate him. But the point is, is constant supervision. You've got to have somebody watching, which means you can't be on your cell phone. You can't be reading a book. You can't be talking to your best friend and not watching the kids. You got to be watching the kids. Yeah. And so, Dr. Purse, since you work for the city health department, you hear about these emergencies. What are the other types of emergencies that you guys get reported um, to you that surround a pool? Yeah, and so the other thing that we always worry about are diving accidents. And so, and I've, oh, yeah. in my career, I've seen this so many times, and every time it's just absolutely heartbreaking and tragic. But when uh, kids and adults, quite honestly, dive into a pool that's too shallow, if you hit your head on the bottom, it puts a lot of force on your neck and it'll break your neck and make and people are very often paralyzed from the shoulders down. Um, and, and really, you really shouldn't enter a pool head first. You should really never enter a pool head first. Always go in, you know, feet first, you know, walk into the pool, there are steps, however, uh, even even for pools that are designed for diving, they really need to be a minimum of nine feet deep. So, and then the other thing mm -hmm. is that, you know, the little pools, don't let your kids dive into those little pools in the back or in the backyard that you get, the inflatable ones or even the above ground pools. They're just too shallow. And so speaking of kiddie pools like that, is there, a, is there a danger with those? I mean, we're talking about kids like one to four having a big risk of drowning, but are they really at risk if it's just a very shallow pool? So yeah, you can drown in just two inches of water. Um, I hate to tell you about it, but we've seen it happen. You can somebody, a child can drown in as little as two inches of water. And so with the background, the plastic pools or the inflatable pools, one thing parents don't always remember is that, you know, when you're done playing with your child in the pool and they're having a good time, you've got to empty the pool because what toddlers yeah. will do is if they can get out, they want to go back to the pool. Right now, they're going to be going back to the pool with there being no adult there. So the pool has to be emptied. And here's another thing you might want to make sure it's flipped upside down or if it's inflatable, uh, deflate it because if it rains and we get a couple inches of rain, that'll fill up and now you've got a risk again. So always make sure that you make the pool safe after you're done playing in it. Yeah, wow, really good advice there. Well, um, when we talk about safety of any pools, though, if somebody has a concern about a pool at an apartment complex or, um, you know, within a hotel or something, Something like that which we see happen in the news like tragedies happening at places like that how can people report it what can they do yeah so if you have any concerns at all 
call 311. They'll get in touch with the Houston Health Department. We have pool inspectors. This is their job. They do this all summer long, and they'll go out and they'll inspect pools. And there are there are criteria. There are things that pool owners and operators in the Houston area have to follow. And surprisingly, one of the biggest infractions we find is the water is not clear. And so mm -hmm. somebody could actually be at the bottom of the pool, and you wouldn't be able to see them because the water is too murky. So one of the things that I think that if you're a consumer and you see a murky pool, it's not supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be crystal clear. Call 311. We'll get somebody out there, and they'll take care of it. Also, make sure that the, the security around the pool is safe, so it's got a self latching door, the fencing around it, uh, there's criteria for that, and we'll make sure they're all up to snuff with that as well. Yeah, don't dismiss it as, oh, they're just not cleaning the pool. It really is a safety hazard, so you need to report it, as you mentioned, to 311. Dr. Purse, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, Ellie.